<laughs> Hello and welcome back to The Oily Life. So in today's video, I'm going to take you along with me as I make some bath bombs. Now, um, I'm kind of still in the recipe development stage for these bath bombs, so I'm not going to be sharing the exact recipe today, but I'm going to take you along with me and, and show you the process of how I make them, um, just so you can get some inspiration there and kind of see if making bath bombs is something that you would like to give a try. So I hope you enjoy today's video. If you do, I hope you stick around and will become part of my community here on YouTube. And uh, let's get to making the bath box. All right, so I am still in the recipe uh, testing stage here, so I'm not going to be sharing the full recipe as of yet. I'm working on getting a recipe that still has a lot of bubbles and foaming action without using any SLSA. So it's taken a little tweaking. Um, but first, I'm just getting my baking soda into my stand mixer bowl here. I have it on top of my scale so I can just measure uh, my first batch of dry ingredients out here. Once I get all of my baking soda in, next I'm going to be adding in cream of tartar. If you have any issues with your bath bombs uh, appearing too soft or being kind of crumbling, crumbly e if that's a word <laughs> then a cream of tartar can help with that it really firms up your bath bombs so i'm just going to be getting that in next and now that i have the cream of tartar i'm adding in good smoke powder and this is what i'm using as a replacement for the slsa SLSA, um, it's, it's not a horrible ingredient, but it also does have some uh, health risk factors associated with it. So it's just not my favorite ingredient to use, uh, but it is what um, helps with your uh, bath bombs kind of foaming and bubbling. Uh, but milk powders can do that as well. So that's why I added in the milk powder. And then I'm in addition to the milk powder, I'm adding in some kaolin clay and that'll give your bath water a nice kind of slip, slippy feeling um, when you uh, use your bath bomb. And then next I'm going to be adding in my mica powder. I'm using Rainforest um, from Nurture Soap. And uh, you don't have to put a ton in. I'm just gonna start off with a little bit and you know, see if I like the color once it starts mixing together. These are gonna be eucalyptus and peppermint bath bombs. So I thought a nice light green would be a good color to use. And then I'm just gonna get everything um, started mixing together in my stand mixer here uh, while I get my wet ingredients uh, all measured out and ready as well as get my uh, citric acid measured out. I like to put the citric acid in last um, so there's less of a chance of it activating. So that's why I hold off and add the citric acid last. And now that this has combined some, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my wet ingredients. And in here is my essential oils, so my eucalyptus and my peppermint. I did 75% eucalyptus and 25% peppermint, along with witch hazel, my polysorbate uh, 80. And I do highly recommend adding in the polysorbate 80, especially if you're gonna be selling your bath bombs. It's just a more of a safety factor because what the polysorbate does is it helps um, once your uh, bath water is done, it helps pull those oils to the side and makes kind of a ring around your bathtub, which makes it easier to clean. And then um, it's not so slippery in your bathtub. Um, it also helps the oils kind of disperse throughout the bath water. So you get a you get a, a more moisturizing bath bomb that way. And then now that all of our liquids are in, I'm just gonna let this continue to mix until it's fully combined. Mm -hmm. 
And now it's time to go ahead and add in my citric acid. Like I said, I do this last just because it does cut down on the chance of your bath bomb mixture actually activating. Uh, so I do go ahead and it's the final thing that I put into my mix. An additional thing I do to keep my bath bomb mixture from activating uh, before you would want it to is I use witch hazel instead of water. I find that that really cuts down on anything activating prematurely before it would be in a bath. Um, so if you haven't tried using witch hazel, I would definitely give that a go. I know some people use isopropyl alcohol. I just happen to like the witch hazel better. And then once your mixture has, is at a point where you can kind of squeeze it and it holds together, then you know you have enough moisture in there and it's ready to go ahead and be pressed into bath bombs. I'm using a mooncake press that I got off of Amazon. I'll link it down below. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve with these. Uh, I redid a lot of the ones um, I made initially until I kind of figured out what I was doing. Um, so first I'm just gonna be adding a little bit of glitter to give it a little, you know, sparkle. Everyone likes a little sparkle in their bath bomb. And then I'm gonna be taking my bath bomb mixture and just pressing that in. I did find, you don't see it right here, but I did find that you want to put a small amount in and really press it into the corners uh, before uh, layering on top of that. This just helps with your edges coming out cleaner. Um, so you can see here, I dumped it out. I started over again um, until I got it where I wanted it. Then once you have the shaft of the press filled completely, you're just gonna take it and turn it over onto a line tray. And then it has like a little plunger mechanism. You're just gonna push that all the way down and then pull it off. Um, another trick I found with these to get the edges so they're uh, cleaner and crisper uh, with you know less little crumbly edges is that you wanna make sure that after you press uh, your bath bomb out, you let the uh, mold retract all the way back before you lift it off of the bath bomb. I found that if I kinda did it in one motion where I pulled it away right after I had pressed the bath bomb out, that that also ended up giving me kinda those crumbly edges. And then here's just a little overview of how they turned out. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Here is another look. It'll focus there. There we go. On how the bath bombs turned out. I love the little bit of uh, gold glitter there on the top. And overall the edges came out really nice. Still has a great eucalyptus and peppermint smell. I'm really excited um, to give these a try and just see uh, how much foaming action I get out of them since it is an SLSA uh, free formula. Um, so I will leave a little demonstration here at the end so you can see how they um, actually work in water. And I hope this gives you the motivation to try to make some bath bombs of your own. Take care and until next time, bye.